But let's go to a not so related question, but very important one. Industry is undergoing some uh, difficult time for sure. How do we attract good people to the industry? Um, in our obviously in our department who then graduate and go serve you, uh, the industry and so on. How best can we do that? What are your thoughts on that item? Well, I, I may open with a comment uh, about attracting good, good people in our industry. Uh, our industry has always been challenging and I think everybody loves a challenge. I think that, uh, you know, from our standpoint, we, we basically have to provide good benefits. We have to provide good salaries. We have to provide a good future. I think the future in our industry is more important than anything else with respect to attracting good people. We, we have to be able to retain who we hire. We have to be able to uh, develop who we hire and, and, and therefore, uh, you know, keep a high level of interest in our industry. If we keep hiring people and laying them off six months later, uh, it's, it's a trend that I think is gonna be very detrimental to, to our industry as a whole. And we have, to, we have to learn how to retain those folks. And naturally it's a commercial and a, and a financial decision at the end of the day. However, I think uh, learning how to retain our folks is the biggest challenge that we have right now. Uh, I, I would just add, I would just add uh, to Dr. Hill's point, I think he made the, the argument, the compelling argument that oil and gas is the single best way to elevate people out of poverty, provide cheap, reliable energy, pr provide them a lot of things that we as Americans take for granted. And we, I think we have to realize to his point, we have to reach those, those other populations of people that don't have what we have. And, and primarily that's gonna be through the delivery of, of, of cost-effective energy. And I think if we can get that message out to those future participants in the only gas industry and explain that the humanitarian benefits of this industry, the, the value and the quality of life improvements, we're gonna see a lot more people interested in that. But that's going to come with the with the understanding we've got to be good stewards of the environment. We've got to protect the, those areas that we're working in, and those they're, they're not mutually exclusive. They're they're actually very closely aligned. We just have to get that message to those, to those people that uh, we're going to need to to innovate and move into the the, the next phase of this business. Uh, uh, to to Micah's point, uh, you know I am very pro green energy and alternative energy sources. And I think one day we will reach the point that that becomes uh, a primary source of our energy and, and so forth. However, right now we're, we're still under development with those, with those green energy and alternative energy sources that do not provide us with the bulk of our energy. Uh, I think once, once, that is, once those goals are met with respect to deliverability and accessibility, that that can be uh, our primary source. However, once those goals are met, that does not mean that oil and gas is going to go away. Because if you look at everything that you own, uh, the houses that you live in, the cars that you drive, the pharmaceuticals, the the, the food that we we eat, uh, so forth and so on, that those things are all powered tractors. You you, you go down the list: uh, tractors, farm equipment. Uh, processing equipment within our within the plants, those things are all powered by by diesel, natural gas, uh, crude oil derivatives, so forth and so on. Very good. We would talk. See, I'd like to I'd like to comment, uh, kind of circling back to the question of you know how does our industry attract talent and keep you know good engineers and scientists. That, two points uh, I'd like to make. Well, first of all, you guys have to pay well. And basically that's been our history. Um, we can buy talents, you know, and, and so when a petroleum engineer is making twice as much as a mechanical engineer working for, you know, the auto industry or something, people will come to our industry. But I, but I think more, more critical right now for us in attracting young people into this industry is is, is kind of fighting the misconception that it's really easy to get from our media that basically oil and gas 
consumption is just going to stop magically somehow in a few years. You know, honestly, you, you talk to 18 year olds and say, why would I study petroleum engineering? We're going to quit using that, you know, soon, tomorrow. And it's, it's a myth. It's absolutely erroneous. It's not possible that we can get away from oil and gas uh, anytime in the near future. And in fact, I tell, you know, entering students during your career, it's just not going to go away. Um, we don't, and, and even as we try to develop alternatives, best we can. So I think that's the message our industry needs to, to, to put out there. And, and honestly, some major companies are almost saying the opposite, and, and, and yet they're, what they're practicing is not what they're preaching. And so, um, you know, that's, that's an important message. I, one thing I like to tell students along these lines is, you know, when you climb on a 787 size aircraft and it's running on batteries, uh, you can start to say goodbye to the oil and gas industry. But we're a long ways from, from that happening, I think.